And so I think it's important that you understand the clinical trial process. I'm not saying that the pill is bad. I just want you to think about how to make health decisions for yourself. You want to be especially vigilant, especially staying on top of it. Once I got the information I needed, I started to move in that direction about how to make health decisions for yourself. In your so, mind, what would you say to brothers that's, um, that's not vaccinated or just people in general? I'm glad to hear you are protected and thanks for being so honest here on Keeping It 100 because that's what we do. Well, hello. Welcome to another episode of Keeping It 100. We are here to have open and honest conversations and make sure you get all the information you need to make better health decisions. That's why we started this show. I am your host, Dr. Covita. I mean, Dr. Kristen Motley. George had called me Dr. Covita last week. Um, but we have another great show in store for you. As always, if you think of questions, pop them in the chat. Um, my friend and colleague, Dr. Ty and Thomas is behind the scenes. She's going to make sure your questions get answered. And I just want to give a shout out to Ashley. Ashley, there are new intro videos. She's been interning with me all summer. Well, she's been interning with me for almost a year now, but she um, really, really stepped it up. I gave her a bunch of work this summer to do and she did our new intro video. So shout out to Ashley Joseph. She is a, she's starting her first year of pharmacy school in a few weeks. So, and I'm teaching in one of her first, first classes. So i um, excited to see her back in class. I actually met Ashley a couple years ago when she was in one of my orientation classes when she was a freshman. So shout out Ashley for our new intro. But let me bring in my co-host, Georgie Mink, who going to throw me a whole bunch of shade. I didn't test positive for COVID. Now I got to hear his mouth. Here we go. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, Doc. Oh, man. I'm going to change your name. No, it's not Dr. Covita, though. It's because you, you're, neg you're negative now. So, <laughs> <laughs> Woo. I know. anyway, it's, it's good afternoon, Doc. Uh, yeah, Ashley, great job on the intro. I like my little cameo in there, too. Yeah. We yeah, she did, she did a great name. job. Yeah. She did. She did. Whew. So, aside from you worrying about me having COVID, what else you been up to? No, nah, um, still out reaching out here. Um, still talking to people, and you know, reaching out to brothers and sisters, and just checking that temp and seeing where they at, where we at with this uh, vaccine vaccination um, process, the thought process. COVID is still out here. It is. So that's why I still have a job. <laughs> so, <laughs> long as COVID this running, right? Long as COVID, I, I still got a job. So. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I had a couple interesting uh, topics this week. Um, with school coming up, a lot of people are concerned. Yeah. Um, you know, mothers and fathers, you know, making sure they pick the right vaccination for their kids. Um, it's crazy because we talked about that a couple of weeks ago, even last week, about picking uh, the vaccinations. And I just told them to just do that research. You know, yeah. make sure they uh, do their homework. Uh, always make sure it's approved uh, information. So not yes. just Wikipedia and not just something, Never somebody, Wikipedia. the Pharaoh or whoever, all these different names on these different podcasts or whatever. So just just make sure you do your homework and do the right thing by your children. And, um, you know, one brother just was like, I can't believe COVID's still around. I'm like, yeah. No. Yeah, bro, it's we here. Hoping, I know. We were hoping it would like dry up, clear up. But once it's a virus and it's unleashed and it spread person to person, and not only do it spread person to person, it spread in social situations. So it's not even like an STD where you really got to be up in somebody right. to get it. You just talking, minding your business like I right. was doing, and you end up with COVID. I'm like, mm. how? Like how? Mm. Mm. So it's it it is it is the perfect disease for humans because we just gotta be out. We just gotta be doing something, and we we're, we you know we are a social society. So right. it's not going to go anywhere. It 
because we have to be around each other. So right. the best thing we can do is be protected and not to get caught slipping is the thing. It's like you can't get caught without any protection because you don't know what the virus is going to do, how it's going to impact you. So thank God we have vaccines available so that we at least have some protection. It may not be perfect. And it can't be perfect because the virus is always going to change. So as soon as they come out with a vaccine that may be, specific, you know, to target the virus, the virus, and we've seen that, it changes. And so, mm-hmm. no, it's not going to keep you from getting sick, but it's going to keep you from being in the hospital. It's going to keep you from dying. Right. So, yeah, you still going to have a cough and a fever and whatever symptoms that you can get by with, but you are you have a very, very, very low chance of dying or having to go to the hospital from COVID when you're vaccinated. So that's the best thing we can do. I mean, that's all we got. Right. And the brother that I was talking to, he was just like, um, you know, he asked me, why do I think people still getting it? (laughs) And I'm like, first of all, bro, it's here to stay. It's just like a cold. It's just like catching any other disease or virus or whatever. I mean, you just never know. I said, me personally, I think people stop washing their hands as much. I think mm-hmm. I think people stop using hand sanitizer, mm-hmm. and of course, people stop wearing masks. I mean, I'm not a comfortable mask person, but I believe some of the other habits that we were picking up at the mm-hmm. time when we was like really on it and rampant, yep. we stopped. I don't That's see people so using hand sanitizer at all anymore like they used to. Anywhere I'm at, I always squeeze it. Like if I'm in the store, I just go, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but I'm just saying it's not like before where I was conscious, I was buying it, it wasn't on the shelves, Mm -hmm. only like the certain kind, I think it was the germ, whatever. So it was just Mm -hmm. like, it's just like now it's not, I think we lost focus on some of that, trying to catch up to our lifestyle. So I think that's true. I think that is totally true. I think that's Mm -hmm. probably how I got COVID. Now I have not been doing anything. I have turned down every party, every wedding, every anniversary, like every when groups of people in my family or friends are getting together, they already know not to ask me to come because I'm not coming. Mm -hmm. So, but I have started to do, but I've always been, you know, pretty comfortable with doing things outside, just not outside around a lot of people. So like I wouldn't do barbecues and stuff like that, but I let my guard down. I said, I've been doing everything. Like I can go to this barbecue. I'll be fine. I'll be outside. I'm not going inside. And I went inside for just a few minutes. I had my mask on. Of course, I'm the only one inside with a mask on. I was not even around anybody. I came back outside. I spent the rest of the time outside and I was, you know, outside but i was touching a lot of stuff and i mm-hmm. sanitized my hand maybe one time so i was helping with the food helping to keep the food covered and keeping like the utensils straight and refilling the food and so just helping out touching everything and i probably sanitized my hands like twice so i'm thinking i probably got it from touching something and then touching my big old nose or touching my eyes or putting my hands in my mouth or something like that so i think you are completely right we 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 have let our guard down We have not been taking the precautions since that we've had since day one. And these variants are getting smarter and stronger. They are, they are, you can spread them much easier than before. Mm -hmm. And so they're just super, super contagious. And so with all of that, so being more contagious and then us not doing um, the social distancing, the hand washing, the sanitizing, the mask and dropping all that, people are just going to get it. That is just a recipe for we we just gonna get it. And a lot of people who are testing positive now are people who who hadn't tested. I mean, who had never had COVID before. Mm-hmm. So we're all like slipping, um, mm-hmm. and we just gotta we we have to stay vigilant. We can't avoid COVID forever. So the best thing we can do is just be vaccinated. Yeah, I mean, yeah, doc. And I mean, again, the people that's not vaccinated. We just want you to just at least think about catching up. That's it. Like we're not promoting, like we're not going to put you in a headlock, but it's just like mm-hmm. you have to catch up with what's going on around us. I mean, this is a serious, this is not like something small. Like it's, this is, it's very serious. Like it can stop your whole livelihood. It can stop you on your tracks. I mean, you was done that next day. 
You were it just will. going here singing and dancing with me. And then the next day, boom, you was like talking with your nose stopped or you was done. I know. I know. It's 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 crazy. And it's crazy to see how it affects everybody differently. So my whole house ended up getting it. I had it first. Then Noah tested positive the next mm. day. Then Bria tested positive the next oh, day. Then Blau no. tested positive the next day. So it's like it like trickled down. And it affected each of us different. Noah, who I was worried about the most, he had the least symptoms. All he had was a cough. So he still has a little cough, but he was coughing through his sleep. He couldn't really sleep that well. Just a lot of coughing for a few days. And then Bria, my poor Bria, she was cool one day. I had tested her at home. Her home test was negative. Her PCR test was negative. She was cool. She went to bed. Um, that night she was like making videos, like comedy videos, having the the best time of her life. Mm -hmm. When I went to go check with her that morning, her fever was like 103. She could not move. She could barely talk. She was dizzy. She couldn't walk. It was just, it was terrible to see her like that. She was in so much pain. Her body was aching, throat, her eyes, her head. Like it, it was just so really? bad to see Bria like that. I was so scared. And one of the scariest things for me was, if um, she had to go to the hospital, I wouldn't even be able to go with her because I got COVID. Mm -hmm. So it's like that that was like the worst part of it all. So I was trying to do what best I could do to get her fever down to manage her symptoms at home because I did not want her to start declining and have to go to the hospital because mm -hmm. I could not even be there by her side. They would not let me in the hospital with COVID. So. It's just a lot. And I, and I just encourage people to do, you know, to be vigilant and to put those things that we did in the beginning, like back in play. Get the mm -hmm. mask on, sanitize, wash your hands. Don't be all around up in people's face like that because you don't know who has it. You just don't know. Um, so Bria, it hit Bria bad. Um, she was actually throwing up last night. We don't know what mm -hmm. that was about. Yeah. And this is like day five for her. And she's like, she's, she's like, she had been good. But then last night it was just weird. We was up at three o'clock in the morning with her, with her throwing up. So it is like the most. And then Bilal, his symptoms have been really, really, really mild too. And again, he was tested negative because once I tested positive, I'm, I had them test every single day, PCR every day. So we went out to do the PCR testing every day and he, he was negative for a while. Then when he turned positive, I was like, oh, boy, the next day I thought he was going to have symptoms, but he but he never really had any um, horrible symptoms. He was mostly just coughing and had some chest co congestion, but mm -hmm. he never had a fever or anything. He had a slight, slight, slight fever, like maybe 100.0, and he was like, oh, I'm about to die. And I was like, don't do that. Stop it. <laughs> I'll do it loud. Hang on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he he. His symptoms were super, super mild. So it hit Bria the worst out of all of us. Then me, then Bilal, and then Noah just been killing it. Noah so. cooking dinner for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they taking exactly. care of the house. <laughs> exactly, wow. exactly. So it's just real interesting how it hits everybody differently. But I think the most important thing is when you're exposed to someone that has COVID, you need to be tested and you need to be tested every day, especially if you have symptoms. Because you are, you're going to spread it to others without even realizing that you have it. So if you're exposed to someone, please get tested and please use a PCR test. The tests are, the home tests are good. A lot of people don't like them. I think they work just fine. I think you need to use them the correct way. And I think that they're most helpful when you have symptoms. So if you have any kind of cold symptoms, for a lot of adults, it starts with like a scratchy throat. If you feel like a weird thing in your throat, that's like a symptom that you should get tested for COVID. And then it just kind of progressed from there. But if you test before you have symptoms, on, um, you're probably going to test negative on a home test. But on a PCR test, you're probably going to be positive. And so that's why we were doing both. The home tests were coming back negative. The PCR, eventually they turned positive for everybody. But I want to show you all some home tests because it's important that you know how to interpret the home test. So if number one, you need to do the test right. Number two, you need to know what you're looking at. So um, Leslie, can you put up the first picture of the home test? Let 
when you take a look, you, you, you'll see a positive test means that there, um, that there's a, so this is one of my home tests. So you'll see a line on the C and that's the control line. That's just there to tell you that the test actually is working okay. okay. And then the T line is the test line. So if that lights up, that means you are, um, I was about to say you're pregnant. That means you're positive. So you have COVID if that T line lights up. And so you'll see a nice dark line and it's real easy to tell. But if you look on this test, if you just glance at it real quick, that T line, how's it look to you, George? It looks blank. It looks, it does look blank. Well, but it's well, faintly really, really, paint or something, right. Yeah, so it's, it's super, super faint. And if you look at it close enough, so I had to take these outside, you'll see it's a faint line, but that's a positive test. That means it's positive. So even though it's super faint, if any kind of faint line comes up on that T line, it is a positive, positive, mm. positive test. So, but you have to like put it up against some light. So I usually put it at the sun. Like I want to make sure that I'm not missing a positive test. Now, the next one is another one that looks really light. This is one that Noah took. His mm -hmm. test results always came up light like this. Um, and you can see the T line is a very, very faint line, but I'm outside in the sun. Now, at, in the house, you really don't see it. It looks like a negative test. But when you go outside, you can see a faint line. So a faint line means a positive test. Remember that. Um, because it can it, it can be tricky if you don't really take your time to look at it. Like I was taking my glasses off. I was putting them on, taking them off. Like I was going a whole trying to figure out what the results of these tests were, especially when they look negative. So um, just want to talk about testing a little bit. George, anything coming to mind for you? Um, yeah, a couple of things. I mean, the testing, um, I guess we pretty much won't test until we have a symptom. Like it wouldn't be no reason to touch because that's what somebody was asking me like well we don't never know we got COVID until somebody else got it and then we go check and i'm like that's true so he was like is there any way we could find out and i'm like i don't know well i mean me and you talked about taking the test like weekly or something like that i know some people that do that i know my mom does that my mom yeah like certain jobs require it too mm -hmm. yeah my mom does that like but she does the home test but she that's she good. personally she she just checks it. That's good. <laughs> she is not it. playing like, with you. Like, you know, but I'm saying, like, you might want to get in the habit of that. It's like. And I think that the most the most important reason that you do that is so that you are not spreading it to someone. So you mm -hmm. may not have symptoms. That's fine, which is great if you don't have symptoms. But you don't want to be positive and be out and about living your best life, spreading it to other people, especially the people who haven't been vaccinated. So again, this goes back to this disease is not just about you. It's not just about me. It's not about me as an individual. It's about us as a community, as a collective, as a people. Like we got to look out for each other. And so if that means testing um, when you don't have symptoms, just periodically testing, because some people just don't have symptoms. Like Noah, we would not have tested him if I wasn't positive. He had a cough, but he wasn't. Well, when he did have a pretty bad cough for a while, but at first it was just, a, a, he, he was sneezing. Mm -hmm. His first symptom was sneezing. So he's, oh, wow. he was sneezing like all day. And I was like, but he has allergies. So normally I would have chalked it up to allergies, but because mm -hmm. I had already tested positive, I figured his sneezing was related to COVID and then mm -hmm. it turned into a cough. So if you are exposed to someone, you absolutely need to get tested. And, and, and if you don't have symptoms, get tested like three or four days later, but get a PCR test to make sure. Because okay. otherwise, you're going to be spreading it around. And you won't know that you're spreading it, especially when you don't have symptoms. So please do that. And then in terms of the home test, you I don't think you're going to come up with a positive result if you don't have symptoms. Because even when I look at Noah's results, they're really, really, really faint. It's hard to see. And Bria, the day before she tested positive, she was negative. But she had a solid negative, maybe a faint line. I really couldn't see it. I was trying to make a faint line, but it wasn't really there. But then on that next day when I tested her at home, 
when her PCR was positive, her home test came up positive like almost immediately. Oh, wow. And the previous day, 24 hours before that, it was like a pretty strong negative. Mm. And, but it changed like within 24 hours, it completely changed. So you got to be testing every day when you're exposed to someone. Now, if you're not exposed to anyone and you just want to do some weekly testing, that's, you know, it's fine. But at home test, I don't think you're going to get um, a, res- a, a accurate result if you don't have symptoms. Dr. Thomas, do you want to add anything in based on what you know or read? No, no, you covered everything. I guess, can you also speak about how can someone find where PCR test is, testing is done? Yeah, that's a good Yep. That's a good one. So I know in Delaware County, Springfield Mall does testing. They do the rapid test and they do PCR tests. You go to Springfield Mall. A website that I like to use is curative.com, uh, C-U-R-A-T-I-V-E.com. We always go to Curative to get tested. Now in Delaware, they do two-hour PCR, which is incredible. So you get your results in two hours. Half the time it takes like a half hour and you get P- PCR results back. And so that's through Curative. So they do it at the Claymont Community Center, and they also do it at Christiana Mall, two-hour PCR testing. But if you go to curative.com and put your zip code in, you can find out where to go get your PCR test. Now, for home tests, if you have insurance through your job, you can get up to eight home tests for free each month. So you can go to the pharmacy, pull the test off the shelves, take take it to the drop-off counter, and they'll process it as if it's a prescription. Eight tests per person per month if you have private insurance. If you have Medicaid, I know they cover tests, but I'm not sure how many, so just contact the pharmacy or contact your plan and find out how you can get access to free tests. Um, and then the same for Medicare, contact your plan and find out how you, how you can get access to free tests. And then the government did a couple shipments too, so you can put your address in through the government link on the post office and get um, your shipments of free tests to uh, use at home as well. Good question. Thank you. Um, Another thing I want to talk about isolation, isolation, because this comes up too for people. Um, So when we test that positive, that means we need to isolate. You're, you're, You're typically contagious for about 10 days, sometimes more, sometimes less. Hold on, I got a call. I think I'm still contagious. That's why I'm sitting my behind here. Hold on. All right. So, 10 days at home, at least. Mm -hmm. For uh, unless you unless you have to leave. So, what the recommendation is. Dr. Covita. Yeah, you back. She back. (laughs) (laughs) I'm talking too much. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Um, The recommendation from the CDC is isolate for 10 days, regardless of your vaccination status. However, you can, which means stay at home. Don't go nowhere. Don't do nothing. Be isolated. Be by yourself in your home environment, not out and about spreading COVID. They say you can isolate for five days if you have no sim- if your symptoms are improving, if you haven't had a fever in 24 hours, and that is a fever without taking medicine. So if you have not taken anything to bring your fever down for 24 hours, you don't have a fever, your symptoms are improving, you only I, you only really have to isolate for five days. And then if you're out and about, you have to wear a mask while you're out and about for five additional days. So two options, 10 days of staying home, being precautious, not around people, or five days of staying home. And then as long as your symptoms are improving, you haven't had a fever within 24 hours, haven't taken any medicine to bring the fever down, you can go out, but you got to wear a mask for five days. Now, there are some people who are contagious longer than 10 days. And so you got to like really be looking at your symptoms. If you're still having symptoms, then you may need to wear a mask longer than 10 days. But I want y'all to remember that this five-day thing don't mean stay home for five days and then be out doing the most or inviting people over. So you shouldn't be having people over because you don't want to get them COVID. Um, And you need to really have a mask on whenever you're around people that don't have COVID. 
and you're in your home. So if you're home and you're living with other people, the best thing to do is to stay away from them. If you have to be around, put a well-fitted mask on. They should probably have a mask on too, is mm -hmm. ideal. But when you have children in the house, it's like impossible because they're not always going to have it on. It's not always going to be on right. And, and when you have COVID and you have a fever, it's hard to wear a mask. It's just hot because mm -hmm. you're just hot. So it's not even comfortable. So I was going to say, just um, realize that when they change the requirement from a 14 day isolation period to 10 days and then to five days plus five days of masking, this was at a time when um, Omicron was picking up in the winter and it was crazy. Teachers were calling out sick. Healthcare providers couldn't get to work because they were sick. Stores couldn't open because employees were sick. So it was so many people had COVID. They needed to keep the country moving along. They needed to keep the classrooms open. They needed people at work helping in the hospitals. And so what they did was they said, all right, y'all don't want to stay home for two weeks or 10 days. You always got to stay home for five days and then put a mask on for the other five days. So know that you are still contagious. It, you're you're not, not contagious after five days. You are. You still got to be very cautious and careful, but you um, need, so you need to wear a mask if, if you're going to leave, you need to have a mask on. We, um, I think this is like my day seven or something. This is my day seven. So, or, or eight. So I'm, I'm just still home. I'm not going out unless I absolutely like need to go out. Or if I do go out, of course, I'm a, I'm gonna have a mask on anyway. So. Right. So doc, yeah. when, should, when should they um, test again? Like, I mean, yeah. you're just going to go to the end of the end of the period, time period or whatever, or should you test after a certain amount of time? That's a good question. So there's no recommendation to test again. There's some jobs that will say you need to test negative before you go back to work. But there's some people that will test positive for COVID for months. So wow. everyone's kind of different. So you can't mm. use the test to really tell if you're still contagious or not um they're just saying look at your symptoms wear your mask if you're still having symptoms beyond 10 days just keep the mask on if mm. you're not having symptoms at 10 days at day 11 then you can take the mask off um but just you know and kind of think about who you're going to be around if you're mm. going in the place where you're like at a store you're not in like a closed space with a whole bunch of people in the crowded setting, then you may be okay without the mask on because you don't want to spread it. But if you are going to your grandma's house and you know, you know, she hasn't had the booster or she may be um, at high risk of having a problem. If she gets COVID, then keep your mask on while you're over there. So you kind of got to use judgment because there's no test that'll say if a person is still contagious or not. Now I tested Noah um a few days ago when because he 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 just hadn't had any symptoms and mm -hmm. his test was negative like it was a complete mm -hmm. straight negative test i don't know if he's contagious or not Bilal is at day 6 i think and he i tested him this morning just to see and his test results came back positive quick mm -hmm. so as much as he want to get out he wants to sit his behind right down somewhere mm -hmm. um for a few more days um, but no, there's no um, test to say if you're still contagious or not. They just weren't designed to do that. And and they haven't been a good predictor at that either. Oh, this is good stuff. This is this is this this is one of my favorite shows. All right. Oh, I, see, um, I mean, I just live. No, I'm just it, saying so it's good stuff though. It's flowing. But all right, so we gotta get back to because I'm I'm feeling like I'm interviewing you right now because you just you just came out to fight. So listen. <laughs> Listen, right. So we was talking about the kids stuff, you know, vaccinations, mm -hmm. school. You was the person driving outside past the building. Like, <laughs> should I get no test? I mean, you know, vaccinated or not, you did you wasn't so are you in line yet? That's all I want to know. Because this this change of perspective, you just had it. I you know, just had I know. It. Well, your whole household had it. Your baby I girl, know. your son, your husband, everybody in your house. So even you doc. Not you, know, oh, say, not me. It's history. It's with Doc. Doc got COVID. Oh my God! Listen, <laughs> but no, real, real talk though, Doc. Like, so how you feel now? Like, and then so even good. another thing. Hold on, not not extend the time. Another thing, because Brie already vaccinated, so she still got sick. 
right? So that's that's the issue. And Noah's not vaccinated at all. So give me something. But how you feeling now? Just go with Noah mm -hmm. first. All right. So I'm, I'm about to blow your mind with this one. Uh -oh. So for me, I just feel like I have more time to wait and see. Because we know that once you have COVID, you have a certain period where you have a strong antibody presence, strong defenses um, against COVID. And so there's like a two to three month window where you, it's very unlikely that you will get COVID again or transmit it. Now, there have been some exemptions. So it's not 100 percent. But that, so there have been some exemptions to that. But for the most part you'll be good. So in my mind, I'm like, all right, he already had COVID. So now I can wait even longer to get all him right. vaccinated and see if anything pops up. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. Well, you <laughs> I know went home. You were driving outside. <laughs> <laughs> you know, went home and you had no symptoms. Well, you know what? We're we going to hold off a little bit. I know. I know. Wow. I know. No, so, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yes. But at the same time, um, I know that it'll take a little while before he can complete. If I do the Pfizer, it's a three dose. So I would need, a, you know, a, three. I think it may take two months. Yeah. The Pfizer is three? But for, for little ones. Yeah. Really? Three oh, wow. Yeah. That's new news. See, that's what I'm saying. It's good stuff. I didn't know that. The Moderna is two shots for the little ones. But for yeah. um, the little ones for less than five, it's three shots for Pfizer. So if oh, that's the wow. case. It's going to take him about two months before he's like fully protected anyway. So right. it may, so I'm still thinking it may make sense for me to start it so that by the time his three months of immune protection from having it is over, he'll be protected from the vaccine. So, right. you know, I'm still playing around. I mean, he's going to get vaccinated. It's been enough doses given. I haven't seen anything pop up yet. I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about safety. And, but I just feel like it might be something that pop up that I just want to make sure that I do my due diligence before I just let him get it. Then I'll be good to go. So I'm closer to getting him vaccinated for sure. Okay. Korea, um, when the Omicron booster come out in the fall, she's definitely going to get that because now she's in school. She's starting public school. Okay. She going to be around everybody. Nobody's going to have a mask on. Um, she, you know, I'll tell her to take your mask when you feel like you need to put it on, you put it on. So I'll let her make the decision, but, um, I'm definitely going to get her the Omicron booster once it becomes available in the fall. Okay. Mommy, good stuff. Good parenting over there. I'm, I'm checking that girl, off. She's I'm checking them off. Though. I'm checking. I mean, it's a, it's a way cause you observed it and like yeah. you said, it gives you a little more time with no, at least you know how he going to react to it. Yep. So I mean, yeah. even you, this is the first time. So your whole house had it. Yeah. So that was like a like a some type of wake up call to help you guide yourself. So I, I I agree with that. Like Bree, she probably need the boost now. That other stuff probably wore off, and it's time for her to pick it up a little bit and kick it all the way back in. You know what I mean? She couldn't fight it the way she probably could afford it. Like yeah, you know, first no. guy. So yeah. Right. She definitely does. And I didn't get her boosted. I know that they have a booster available for her age, but I was like, eh. So she may have made out better had she got the booster. I don't know. It's too late to right. tell now. Right. But see, that's what, you know, I'm still I still be like, eh. Right. Eh. I mean, you're supposed to though, Doc. I mean, you're not supposed <laughs> to be all in. Like, I that's know. why I'm not even a brothers and sisters that's hesitant. I'm not really uh, mad at you. I'm not. I know why you hesitant. That's fine. Yeah. But I mean, you in a hesitant situation right now. It's like I, I don't know. You a doctor, and we we, know, we, we, know. we give clinics and everything. I know. <laughs> you know I mean? I'm just so, I'm just like get some protection, like at least because right. the the two doses still keep you out the hospital. It still keep you from dying. Like get right. the first two doses. Right. The boosters are added. They help. Um, but they don't last long. They the the they haven't been lasting more than eight weeks. So I'm like, I don't need a booster just for eight weeks of time. Like if I, if if I want a booster, like I want it to last longer. So I I did get the first booster, um, but I didn't get Bria boosted because it's just and 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 then I'd rather wait until the Omicron becomes available because that's the one that's currently in circulation so this fall the drug company should have the omicron specific booster available then we get back in line and then i think you'll see less people getting sick unless the virus changes again which it very well could do 
So that's where we are. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk about symptom management, but we didn't even get this. Maybe we'll talk about that next week. Um, but what I'll say, if anyone has um have had a you know a positive um test and, and if anyone in your household is having symptoms, call your doctor, call them and let them tell you how to manage your symptoms. There's so much you can do without taking actual medication. And um use your insurance. You may even have a telehealth visit. So, mm-hmm. so a lot of insurance companies have apps where you can install the app and see a doctor who's not your primary care doctor through the um th- through the app. So take advantage of any benefits you have um, and try to see someone and get them to tell you how to manage your symptoms. Because it, it feels very close to having like the cold or a flu. Um, mm-hmm. So I get that like when people say that. But for some people, it is worse. And I have never seen as many people get sick and die from having a cold or a flu. So it's not just like having a flu. It's, it's worse than that for sure. Um, causes some real breathing problems. Um, so please get vaccinated. Just stay out the hospital is the best thing you can do for yourself. Yeah, Anything else anybody with- want to add, Ty, Georgie? I was going to say, especially with winter coming. I mean, you know, it's already that's cold season on top of COVID season is all year. So, you know, (laughs) they got a a whole year. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I mean? But it's like, you know, like uh, it's cold. It's flu season coming up now. So it's like a double whammy. So you kind of want to have stuff going to be able to fight it. What you got, Todd? You got anything? No, I agree. I was trying to see if there was a date of when the the new vaccine is coming out. I don't see it yet, but it looks like it is going to cover for the Omicron and then the previous main stra- um, strain. Okay. So, you know, I would say also wait until that comes out. So at least you're getting protected against the, um, the Omicron um, variant yep. as well. And then also don't forget yep. flu shot. Um the one thing I'm thinking maybe we can cover next week or um, other shows is like, do you need to wait between getting your flu and your, yeah, yeah. your or yeah, so we can question. check on that. But don't forget flu too, because then there have yeah. been a lot of odd things happening where like other viruses have been like peaking earlier and like really mm-hmm. showing different symptoms because COVID, I think, just kind of changed the landscape of things. It's just been very crazy. So like if don't forget right. the other ones as well, because sometimes we get focused on COVID and say, OK, I'm not going to get my flu one because I want to get one shot, which, you know, makes no sense. But mm-hmm. yep. That's my thoughts, though. That's Thanks, great, Dr. great Thomas. Stuff. Thanks for that's throwing great out. See, this that sister power. I like sister power. We know how we do. Y'all, y'all hurting them. Stuff. Y'all hurting them, Doc. Y'all hurting them. Woo, so <laughs> good. I love it. Uh, well, thanks everybody for tuning in today. If you need to get your COVID vaccine, I'm just going to put out vaccines.gov. You can put in vaccines.gov and find any place to get vaccinated. Now, I used to give out a phone number. But I can't even find that phone. So I'm not even going to tell y'all to call or text me because I don't know what the phone is. But I did start an Instagram. I don't know what I'm going to be doing on Instagram. I have no idea. I just needed something to do just to switch up my time because I'm in the house with three people every day, all day. And I was like, let me just do something. So y'all can follow me at Doc is on the ball. And um, I'm still trying to figure out how to make posts and stuff. So it's going to be a little minute. So just bear with me. G, you on Instagram? Uh, no, nah, not really. I mean, not I really do frequent, but <laughs> I mean, since you got one, I mean, and I had to find out in front of the world, but it's up. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. We're gonna we talk. Gonna to to We're gonna talk when we, when we cut this uh, camera. Is, you know, we gotta have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's all good. It's all good. Right. I'm gonna get it together. Right. All right, y'all. Have a good day. Thanks, Dr. Thomas, G, Ashley, Liz. Everybody have a good day. Thanks for tuning All in. Right. Hey, Thanks, Thomas. everybody. Have a good day. All right, y'all, everybody. And so I think it's important that you understand the clinical trial process. I'm not saying the pill is bad. I just want you to think about how to make health decisions for yourself. You want to be especially vigilant, especially staying on top of it. Once I got the information I needed, I started to move in that direction about how to make health decisions for yourself. In your mind, what would you say to brothers that's, um, that's not vaccinated or just people in general? 
I'm glad to hear you are protected and thanks for being so honest.